Hey everybody, John from the Crafting Brothers here. I wanted to try something a little bit different this week um, and just sort of go back to my roots in crafting, which started with woodworking. Uh, when I was back in high school and even before then, I loved working with wood. Now we're building a lot of stuff out of foam and, and painting and doing stuff for D&D. &D. One of my favorite things to do is to take a chunk of wood and turn it into something completely different and transform it. I even for a while started building birdhouses, very intricate birdhouses. You can see this one over here uh, with the beach theme. And uh, it's just a fun thing that I started to do uh, before I started getting into D&D &D crafting. I'm gonna take this chunk of manzanita here and transform it into something amazing, hopefully. And I think this will be worth watching. So stay tuned and let's get right to it. So I am fortunate enough to have this beautiful piece of manzanita here. And you are normally not supposed to be able to get manzanita you're absolutely not supposed to cut these uh, down in the wild. Uh, but this came from a private property, and so I think it's okay. If it's not, by the time I release this video, I'll be in jail. At any rate, I'm going to work with this piece here. I'm going to create a bandsaw box. I just got my bandsaw blades in the mail yesterday, so I'm ready to hook those up to the bandsaw. And looking at this piece of manzanita, you can see, as this comes around, there are cracks in this wood. And this only happened after this limb was cut down. Uh, it was in the sun and so probably it started to dry up and we've got some cracks along here. But I think that might actually play to my advantage here because once I start cutting this piece up, uh, if there are cracks in there, I'm gonna use a special filler and I think that will just add to the piece. So let's get started and see what I can do with this beautiful piece of manzanita. <laughs> So when I'm cutting all of the individual pieces of this box, there's a specific order that you have to follow. First, I'll cut the top and bottom on the bandsaw, then the two sides, and finally the two end pieces are cut. The one step I forgot to show is that I have to cut one more piece from the core that I need for the lid. So here I've got all the pieces ready to assemble, and I have to make sure to put these together in order. I'm going to glue these all together and if I do it the wrong way I'm just going to screw it up. So I have to be careful when I'm clamping all this together. Here's the core piece that I forgot to show earlier and this will actually be glued on the underside of the lid and create a nice tight fit on the top of the box. So we're going to glue these pieces together and I'm going to clamp it all up and then we're just going to let it dry. Okay, it's time to remove the clamps here. Let's see how good of a job we did gluing this together. Hopefully there aren't many gaps, or hopefully there aren't any gaps, but there usually are a few. And I can see some already, but that's all right. They can be filled. So what we want to do is pop this. Ooh, see we have a break right there. What we want to do is pop this middle piece out. Okay, you can see we've got a little break there. We'll have to fix that. A few little gaps. Okay, I've just glued the bottom parts of the boxes here. And it looks like the glue is dry. This one here. So I'm gonna finish sanding up around the edges here. And then we will get the tops ready for these two boxes.
What I'm doing on all of these boxes is taking my X-Acto blade and exaggerating the flaws in the box. And the reason for doing this is that it's just going to allow more room for the next step, which will be the resin pour. What I need to do now is prep all of the different parts of the boxes that are going to be uh, receiving the resin pour. So I'm using masking tape around the edges and that will contain the resin once I start to pour it onto the surface. So this is my first time using this Art and Glow product and I've ordered it from Amazon. It's basically a glowing powder, a glow in the dark powder. And I'm going to be adding this with the resin and pouring in a teal color and then that is gonna be poured into all the surface cracks on the wood. So I'm using a two-part epoxy resin here and then I'm gonna mix everything together. So as I'm pouring in the Art and & Glow and mixing it together, it does not appear to be turning blue like it's supposed to. I don't understand what happened here. Um, but then I figured out later that it actually glows uh, blue in the dark. But as far as the resin goes, it's going to remain kind of white and pasty like this. So what I need to do is just grab some teal paint and mix that in to get the color that I want. After pouring the resin, I'm going to use a toothpick to make sure I get the resin in all of the cracks. I don't want to miss any spots. And here's what we end up with after quite a bit of finish sanding. I skipped that part. I don't think it's fun to watch. But you can see how nicely this resin blends in with the wood. So this box is still unfinished right now. I have one more step to do before I apply a coat of mineral oil on the wood, which will transform this piece into something amazing. Okay, so for this process, you're going to need your wood box to start. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is line this wood box with a really nice material. It's kind of like, almost like velvet, but not quite as thick. It's just a nice kind of leathery material, really soft. And I want to line the inside of this box with that material. So to do that, I'm going to need some cardstock, which I have right here, a ruler, and some of this Super M uh, adhesive spray. And what I'm going to do is cut out all the pieces. I'm going to need one for the bottom and two for the sides and then two for the ends. So just need to measure this. And it's about three and seven eighths. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter because the thickness of this material is going to make it a little bit bigger. So we'll go three and three quarter. So I'll mark that off. I'm using spray adhesive here on back of the cardstock and that will allow me to attach it to the material. So once everything's all cut out, all I have to do is trim the corners here and then I'm just going to fold the material onto the back of the cardstock. Once this is done, you can just put the liner pieces directly inside the box. Thanks for watching everybody and I really do hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to send me your comments and let me know if this is something you like to watch or not. Either way is fine. I'm sure I'll be back to my D&D crafting next week so we'll see you then with another build or challenge. Bye for now.